All these soda cans are unopened. <laughs> Ooh! That's enough there. Don't want to be uh, getting any copyright claims. Uh, Irish whiskey. Stood in Ireland. Handcrafted and bottled by something I can't quite read. What's in the way? Why has he got so many damn copies of this book line right everywhere? Dear Mr. Green, by writing for me that unfortunately Mercury Book will be unable to publish the follow up to the accidental pariah despite the low sales of the accidental savior. We went ahead with publication of the second book in hopes that John Russell's series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It's been a pleasure working with your publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best of your future endeavors. Alright. So, lost my jib. Or his, he lost his jib. Some vodka. Stand up. Very interesting art. Don't want to put it back. I want to see if there's. Oh, okay. Never mind. I guess I could have. Well, if no one bought the book, we certainly have plenty of copies of it. Man, look at all these records everywhere. Katie, please tell mom and dad sorry about the stuff that's missing. Lip stuff. Some highlighters. I'll show random stuff. Hi, Lonnie. So if you wanted to come over to my house still this afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Write back and leave this in my locker if you still want to. And now we meet in the parking lot for 6. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there. I'm going to kick your butt. Not really. I can... So you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men? Yeah, turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So in the after wild. I was finished getting my butt kicked, <laughs> I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the Psycho House. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Hmm. Oops, didn't want to see that again. Did you hear that? And we got enough damn tele telephone directories for this county. Okay. Dear Jan, it's so good to hear from you again. All this now, all this new house business sounds 
like quite the adventure. Remember the little dorm room we shared freshman year when we were miserable fantasizing about our dream home? I've always said I wanted a mansion. You said you just wanted a house in the woods. Look who got both. Somebody up there likes you. I could use some of that magic. Send me some lotto numbers. I'll play them seriously. <laughs> but I shouldn't be complaining about this. Good old split level we've we've had since Bob got transferred to Winnipeg. Uh, we just got new vinyl signing. Jealous yet? <laughs> Let me know if you ever want to trade places. So how are the girls doing? Has Katie left on her big European adventure yet? Speaking of jealous, write me back soon and miss you. I was going to try to flip the letter over and I closed it. Okay, lots of locked doors, man. I decided that I'm going to shut these doors. I feel more comfortable with the front door of the house shut, I've decided. Control burn schedule for Boone County. Smoke will rise over the northeast region. Um. Boone County over the better part of next week, part of the forestry service run. Controlled burn of overgrown sections of the forest. Forestry crews have been preparing the area for months. The burn operations will take place 5 uh, a.m., 5 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, according to blah, blah. In addition to removing dead and overgrown vegetation, lead to wildfires in drier months. Operations serve a valuable training tool. The forestry and firefighting personnel involved, said Senior Conservation Janice Greenbrier. Smoke will likely the lingering room area through the following weekend. <clears throat> Couples bowling cooking class. Couples bowling cooking class. Ballroom dancing. Notice of temporary personnel transfer. Head of personnel, State Forge Service, to aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation. The ranger with a ranger with expertise in the procedures being transferred to the station of Flintlock National Forest. Uh, please see attached personal file. The overseeing officer uh, is charged with the supervision of transfer personnel. The transfer will be based upon performance evaluation as well as recognition of the overseeing officer. So many things you can grab without real reason. Oops. Alright. Oh, there we go. We need all the lights we can get, man. What's this? I didn't get to quite read that bottom line. You're gonna like this, I think's what it said. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like instantly just right. I gave her the grand psycho house tour and took my revenge <laughs> on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. We'll read I that haven't stopped playing talking. it since. Okay. I like this, that you're as bad as your sister and I've been leaving every damn house in the light, or house... Every light in the house since I got here. All right, who would make concern? I, Smith Greenbuyer, am 17 years old and therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that I'm still being forbid, that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd. Compare with Katie, who is only three years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across the ocean to another continent on her own. 
I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own like a human being. And since you may also remember that I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. Okay. You need better lighting in your room, Samantha. This is what I find. So, this is Samantha's room. Left your TV on. Hmm. We're missing something again. Chun Li moves. <laughs> kick, 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 kick. I always had the hardest time to do her damn helicopter kick. Stupid Chun Li. Adventurous the cat returns. done one of these in forever. I wonder if you could do it on a computer screen. Everyone out there in the YouTube world is now crossing your eyes. Oh, I almost had it. Oh yeah, you can totally do this on a computer screen. I wonder if this is important to the story if I'm just sitting here cross-eyed like a damn idiot. Oh man, I almost had it again. Okay, it's a heart. That wasn't important. Okay, this one's like a dolphin or something. Anyways, Super Spitfire, Journey of Crystal. Labyrinth Chapter 2, Frame Threads. Oh, hey! This is this is the story. Captain Lager still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jergen descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. Or unless, well, it may be a different story. She, no, yeah, she and her first mate on their own now grew closer to their goal. The, the throne room for the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line to the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moss that inhibited the island, trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. It turned into words from some ancient language they could not understand. The king's cursed voice, the hairs of Captain Allegra's arm stood on end. She looked back at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked on in the blackness of the passage for the moment too long before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead. Following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, they came upon a rocky ga gap spilling forth unwordly blue light worldly. The great basin of the king's... Whew, stop that! <laughs> to the, king's, the dead king's throne room lay below. Skeletal and rotted robes, the king was hunched over a blue orb topping his royal scepter, shadows of the bony fingers danced on the walls like ghouls as he sang well, welling souls flowed in one by one through the cracks in the cave walls, pulled into the orb, causing it to glow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase hewed from rocks led down into the chamber from the passage on top. Allegra said, we have the advantage in numbers. It, it will draw his attention, and then you. I would draw his attention, and then you. But the first mate interrupted. No, I'm smaller and quicker, and you know I'm dealing with mystic energies like these. And you know I'm dealing with mystic energies like these. Um, I will circle the other side, get the king's attention, and lead him uh, on a merry chase. She held up a silk line, all traced 
by this invisible thread, of course, invincible thread, of course. Allegra said, It is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. The first mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped his hand, exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warm. The first mate tried the shining, tied the shining thread to her belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his, wait, no, no. The singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra, Allegra wanted to call out to do anything to stop the first mate from running headfirst into danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her. No use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs. Then the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even from across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran, summoning his undead power. The king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with distressing speed. From some dark passage, from some dank passage, much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running toward the sound. The line in Allegra's hand felt, felt, went taut, then struggled, then shuddered. <laughs> it fell, it fell slack to the stone floor. As Allegra ran, she was gathering the line, twisting it around her arm. She came to its end. The unbreakable thread dangled limply, its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed to the ground and ran, ran, ran. Whew. What a mess. Hi, Lonnie. I wrote this first period and left it in your locker on the way the second. It's what all the cool kids are doing, I've decided. Write me back. Also, here's an idea for something to draw. Two cats on a motorcycle. Hey, it's a good idea. What all the cool kids are actually doing is sending each other pages on their beepers. But we're cooler than them because guess what? They can't put this on a beeper. <laughs> two, two cats. Oh wait, there was another page. Your drawing of cats was so good that I've added the background to make it even better. Maybe I should just stick to writing though. I like it. How did you know they were about to be abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mr. Fish right now. It feels like he would probably have lots of cats. Also, like... His secret shame is that he watches 90210 religiously. I've asked him about it after class. I'll ask him about it after class. He said he doesn't have cats, and he also that he's never watched 90210. But I could see in his eyes he was lying. <laughs> okay. 11, Mr. Fletcher Creed 5, shop, metal working C minus, not a challenge assignment, metal plaque for family portrait. Reasonable subject, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I did not mean just to add them underneath. Acceptable leveling on edges. Show more pride in work. Soul Asylum. Live. Eddie Vedder. Weezer. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. It's creative writing. Three students from each track will be offered a full scholarship. Okay, so this is what loops through. Hey Sam, do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum? I came out last weekend and told, and Todd won't shut up about it. So either it's good or we can make fun of it. Make fun of him for liking it. My mom is supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change, but I can just ditch out on it probably. What time? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I going to barf? 
According to Todd, it's pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with the heroin needle. So that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers is important. Todd wants to see it again. 715 okay? Don't barf. Alright, see you then. Barf. She's really infatuated with this Lonnie girl, huh? Enough so to put her name on the inside of the bathroom cabinet. Actually, let's see if there's anything back here behind that. Nope. Okay. I'll accept that this is broken. Oh, what the hell's going on here? Okay, so that's what's in the water there. Whoops. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. <laughs> I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. It's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy, or good, or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something, but I waited. And the moment was gone. Mom, Dad, and Sam. I'm in the channel. This is my second passage through the channel. I'm on my way back from London, this time going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way to London, but I was too excited about the channel. Uh, London was great. Dad, I know you're always wanting to visit, and I think you really should. Uh, you'd love it if you wanted to come back here as a family sometime, I guess. I could be convinced. 